and force. So there is a relationship between consciousness and force. And there is a, uh, obviously some uh, connection of the force with the profound. Yeah. So then the question is, how can I, with my conscious intentionality, yeah. uh, approach the profound? But uh, Antonio said that if, to say that I will approach the profound is a contradiction in terms because when I am with the profound, I am not there actually. Yeah. So then what happens to consciousness? What happens to force? And uh, how are they connected uh, with the profound? Those are some of the questions that came up in my mind. Yes, well, quite interesting. I mean, it is something that perhaps we can try to, <clears throat> to answer together because um, for example, we know that uh, in, in assesses, after we complete the discipline, we are um, made aware of the purpose. The purpose, that is uh, the intention. In Spanish, we say propósito, the, the direction that you want to imprint in that contact. But that contact, when, when you are working in assesses, is precisely contact with the profound, because really you want to move beyond the ambit of the psychological. Because when you are operating in the, in the psychological uh, structure, that is the mechanical uh, structure of consciousness, there is a certain limit. You cannot go beyond a certain point then we apply uh, mechanisms that, uh, that uh, aim at suspending the eye. That means all activity and relationship with the psychological, because all that is the eye, is part of your eye, because it's, it's uh, the psychological structure that helps you to move around in the world, but limits you to go beyond. Now we are explorers of the beyond. And then uh, that's why we have worked in disciplines. And the purpose of that very strong sense of direction that is an emotional force is, uh, is uh, an aspiration, very essential aspiration in, in your heart and in your mind to, to go beyond what is that you know. To, to, if possible, to, to peep into transcendence, into that other realm that we can deduce it exists, but we cannot approach it at will. And then it's as if you launch a beam, a sort of laser from within yourself that will push you into that situation. And you need to produce a, an opening in your mind and in your heart. And with that sen sense of purpose, perhaps if there are many other very good conditions within yourself, you can achieve that suspension of the eye. And then in that case, you will not remember exactly what happened to you or how long you have spent in that other ambit, in that other place. And we were saying the other day, because you don't have memory, because you have the, 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 don't have the capacity to reflect, you don't um, know, you don't have a language that you can interpret easily. All the signs of the, of the psychological language that we use in our day-to-day -day life, they all get suspended unless possibly later on, if you really have touched there a different ambit, they will start to come as revelations, as very profound ideas, as intuitions of another kind, as phenomena that we can uh, recognize as phenomena of the higher centers, of the, uh, that emotional superior center or intellectual center, superior center which we have no access in our day to day. No? They operate with, with big synthesis, with very profound understandings of things, with, 
with the stuff that comes from revelation as if the prophet had spoken to you or something like that if you were a muslim or god to moses or, or, or things of that sort profoundly mystical sort of stuff or or at least that you recognize that they are not from the realm of the day to day so they are in terms of the of the intention that you can use as a guide to to move into those those uh, ambits but as you uh, said well i mean uh, uh, which is the role of consciousness and which is the role of the, the, the psychological functions and memory well all of those are suspended so they they have a role just to position in the launching pad where you are launching this missile and uh, and uh, from there you have to later on rescue things but uh, if you have really touched that other ambit it will express itself not necessarily in the in the in the calendar or the or the or the clock time or the day to day time uh, at different moments it will appear it will appear as a as a delayed response but it will express not no no doubt about that no doubt about that i don't know if at one point the access to the profound becomes intentional when you start to consolidate a higher level of consciousness if if really you have consolidated a level of consciousness of oneself and you have that capacity of auto observation i suspect that from that state of consciousness you can be closer and you can uh, induce or generate the phenomena of contact with the higher centers or with the profound more frequently but what are the rules that apply there to that more awakened consciousness i cannot tell you because i am not there yet i aspire to <laughs> can i can i come in antonio to add yeah at all times yeah yeah sure. thank you so did you can you please uh, allow me to share share screen what 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 are you do uh... yeah he's done it. thank you so much sir screen and the other point is the force that tashitosh wanted to ask for i go ahead. Think... you can you, you you can complete that if you want under you please go ahead everything we we uh, do in that uh, in that uh, uh process of getting in touch with the profound requires the force and the force need to be mobilized to the to the higher centers that means to the intellect if possible to the intellectual part of the intellectual center so if you get in touch with your with your energy with your force and uh, and you can uh, generate a, a a more vigilic level of consciousness even later on you probably will have to when you are making the effort to disconnect everything you will not pay attention to that and you will let yourself go but the impulse of 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 your energy circulating in the best of its possibilities is is essential for any sort of profound psychological work we cannot say that you have to put yourself in semi sleep to get in touch with the profound <laughs> now happening you will you will get in, in touch with a profound level of sleep there but it's a different direction and do may I ask one question yes uh what you uh, what you told just now what is the relation uh, between intellectual uh, part of the intellectual center and connection with the force is there any uh, relation or 
Yeah, the more force that you have in your system, the more uh, energy, the higher the potential of energy, the work with the force will allow you to, to train your energy and to move it internally in the, in the ways that you uh, want. All the, the work with the force is, is uh, first a phenomenon of connection and then a phenomenon of direction where you, you, you eventually uh, will move it into, into your head. And from there it is possible that you have some experience uh, that you could, would call much more conscious than the normal ones. As per, uh, as per our uh, psychophysical scheme of centers, mm. uh, our lowest center is vegetative center mm. and the highest center is uh, intellectual center. And, uh, the force uh, energy uh, goes upward from uh, vegetative center to uh, intellectual center. Yeah, circulates in all the centers. For example, uh, when uh, we one we by one center by. Yeah, but I mean, in the mechanical part of the centers, is is you don't need to make a huge effort to to for the energy to work okay. in the in the mechanisms of association. In the when in fact, when we are revering, day revering. Is that is a phenomenon of the intellectual center? You are working with images and with imaginary plots and and like watching a film. Okay. And, but that is a, the the most mechanical part or the less conscious part of the intellectual center. Is the intellectual okay. part of the intellectual center when you move energy there in that section with 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 strength with power. From there, you can produce a connection to the to the higher centers. That's why the attentional works. If you can sustain, you can become very persistent in working, trying to divide your attention, direct your attention, divide your attention, and in real terms, divide your attention. What happens at that with those exercises is that you end up producing a shock that touches the, 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 the higher center, and you can enter into a state of consciousness of oneself, even if it doesn't last too long, but it will last some time. When you have persisted okay. in that Including type my, of work my, for some my time, is, yeah. My question is, uh, like in uh, musicians, uh, the uh, uh, art performers, they are also uh, able to uh, achieve uh, this kind of mystical experience. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when they are performing their uh, art performance or musical uh, performance, yes. Uh, uh, whether uh, their <coughs> uh, their energy is uh, elevating through intellectual centers or directly from uh, this uh, uh, emotional center. Yes, they produce harmonic connections. That's why we 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 wanted to remember when we had a quick look at the centers that there are connections okay. where a sub part of a center produces a direct connection with the higher center and the higher center. If you, if you okay, have okay. an emotion that is almost sublime when playing your instrument, okay. you are a master, you are extremely good at it. And you make that instrument almost like a magical instrument. And of course, to play in okay. that level, you will produce, as you say, connections to the higher parts of the emotional center and to the intellectual center because of the level of attention okay. to the particular note that you need and the vibration that you will generate. So yeah, those phenomena in, 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 in an art or in a practice of that type can happen. The same in dancing, in ballet, or in, in, in some of those uh, okay. performance arts that requires such level okay. of attention and such level of feeling and concentration. Yeah, you can produce it. Or, uh, or may, uh, may I uh, ask uh, some question related to our uh, inner look uh, chapter uh, connected to tree of life? Yes. I think uh, chapter number 13. Yes. Internal uh, states, you mean? Yes, yeah, internal yeah. states. Yeah. There, there, uh, there uh, some of the stands which is explaining a place uh, which is uh, half moon, an area of half moon. And uh, uh, I, 
and uh, silo is explaining a, an image of uh, uh, phantom images uh, like something like that when yes, uh, at, yes. at that state we will experience that kind of experience and it is not real it is uh, he is saying can you explain what it is can can you read exactly the the, the part of the uh now uh which i don't have the book it? on my which chapter is it the eternal states inner states inner states i think inner, inner, chapter inner 19 chapter 9 yeah. chapter uh, it is 19 okay me sudeep ji there will be a point on black moon he is talking about the black moon ah uh, yes yes black moon right yeah which is the point Sudhir is reading it out. He is just looking for it. okay in that this is uh, point number 9 mm -hmm. in that open space you may be frightened by the immense deserted landscape mm -hmm. and the terrifying silence mm -hmm. of this night transfigured by enormous and immobile stars yeah there directly over your head you will see set in a, in the firmament of the suggestive form mm -hmm. of the black moon Yeah. A strange eclipsed moon located exactly opposite the sun. Yes. Here you must await the dawn patiently and with faith, for nothing bad can happen if you remain calm. Yeah, I think it's an allegorical expression because it's yeah. an eclipsed moon. It's a full moon mm -hmm. that is hiding completely the the view of the sun. It's allegorically is it it refers to a point where you have progressed. quite a bit and uh, still uh, uh, the, the, the light, the open sun uh, of allegory eyes uh, by a different level of consciousness doesn't appear to you. It's like a state of purification. It's a state where you should not improvise any movements because you are not seeing clearly what happens, where you have to reach there and you have to continue working in the way that you have go to that point and wait and continue working and continue preparing and continue if you want purifying yourself internally do not improvise and at one point it will reveal to you an awakening will take place an enlightenment after you have reached that point of enlightenment it explains that it is very difficult that you are going to fall back from there unless you of course you want to attempt that intentionally for that, any other particular purpose so that is is describing in my view allegorically the state of awakening the state of enlightenment and this seems to be a previous stage to that enlightenment the the black moon i don't know uh, which other um, um, explanations uh, can be given silo um, <clears throat> explain even in some of those um, so this is a meeting a bit later no? hi julius hello i am in another meeting i'll call you when we complete here but i know that at 2 o'clock is a scheduled meeting there yes i will i will try to visit for a time thank you take care bye yes what other idea do you have about that
Are you asking uh, Baiju? All of you. I mean, we are in an open uh, yes. conference here. So, 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 uh, uh, Antonio, let me let me come in with that opening. Uh, we we are at we are at two parts. One is Ashutosh's question about uh, consciousness, about uh, intention, about um, the rise and the suspension of the eye. Yeah, that's yeah. that's one thing. And then uh, Baiju's question, which I think is quite related, uh, about uh, the the rise from the unstable dome into the uh, uh, open space of energy, and then to the black moon, yes, and then and then to objective consciousness. So he's he's talking about the rise within the inner states. So uh, uh, Baiju is going specific, and Ashutoshi is coming on a general basis. So allow me to express my opinion at this point because I think it will yeah. help the group to get uh, to get a, a picture of what Negro is uh, hinting at. And uh, uh, Baiju, uh, uh, mind you, and all of us. That Negro is intentionally not telling us many details. So, so let's uh, let's be clear on that. That it's not that he uh, he couldn't have expressed it more finely. He certainly could have. He would have. But it is in our own interest that we don't run into the imagination of things and we we first accumulate the energy. We rise the energy. We take it to the unstable dome. We we take it higher up to the open space of energy and then the black moon and then of course objective consciousness. So this is a very uh, uh, what we're doing is, uh, is at great risk, so I'll keep it at minimum. So, uh, uh, and all of us, I request all of us not to run this into the imagination, just to take it as a practical thing, as Negro has always kept us on the ground, not to fly with this. Better so to this call it Silo, no? <laughs> yeah, Silo. Silo. So, Silo has kept it. Uh, so, in matters of school, uh, immediately Negro comes out. So, uh, so that is that is what I am uh, requesting, and then uh, Ashutoshji's point about suspension of I and intentionality. I'd like to express my opinion here that intentionality is something which is still within the I, but it is very important in the beginning. Much like if I'm driving a motor car, I need to put it in first gear in order to reach the second gear. So I cannot say that I'm going to do away with the first gear and go straight to the fourth gear. At the same time, I need the first gear only for the first bit, only for the pickup, only for going to a certain distance. After that, it is no longer in use for the journey to continue at a certain speed. So in order to start my journey, in order to uh, focus all my energies into one place, we have this thing of intentionality. And as we learned in the school, we have this thing of the automatic that Silo once described that we put ourselves in an automatic, which is basically setting the purpose. So that we, with the intentionality, we set the purpose. The purpose, of course, if we are in the school, then I, I would assume the purpose is to liberate ourselves from this machine. So this acknowledgement that we are inside a machine so I and this machine is not the same. There is a distance between myself and the machine. So when I am rising, when I am talking about liberation, I'm not talking about liberation from something outside. I'm talking about liberation from the, from the contraption of the machine. As the machine makes me identify itself with itself, I start feeling that whatever the machine is doing, I am doing, but it is not true. We are talking about a distance with the machine. And the I is nothing but the accumulation of data from the machine, which is basically my memories, that is my past, uh, which is basically my sensations, which is the present, and which is the imagination, which is the future. So all of the emotions that I'm feeling, whether I'm feeling happy, sad, ecstatic, unhappy, whatever it is, violence, this, that, all of that forms within the ambit of the eye because that comes from my emotions and my sensations. It is still a part of the machine. Anything that I'm sensing is a part of the machine. So the eye is an aggregator. So the, 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 the illusion with the eye is that actually it doesn't exist, but I think it is right there. Okay. As I kept working on myself, I'm just telling you what I what I experienced, so I have it written down somewhere in my notes that as you, as we start working with our eye, the eye starts 
we start realizing as we start deconstructing the eye that the eye doesn't actually exist. It's just a temporary coordinating mechanism. It's, it's, I, when I say Chaitanya, there is no such thing. There is, this, this coordinator is a temporary coordinator. The temporary coordinator is coordinating my memories, is coordinating my future, is uh, my imagination, is coordinating my sensations, is putting it all together so that the machine can keep going further. But it does not have a permanent location. It, it is there till the machine is there. Its, its existence is only for the machine. So when we are talking about suspension of the eye, what we are talking about is suspending this uh, constant imposition of the eye on us and going beyond the machine. <clears throat> That's what we are to use the word transcendence. So we are transcending from the machine into, into a world which we have not experienced before, but let's understand, we come from there, nevertheless. So it's not like it's a new place for us, but ever since that we are being born, we can't experience this anymore because we are in this contraption of the machine. There's a constant sensation, there's a constant past, future, past, future. Uh, this, this, this thing of what we call the mind or the reverie, it constantly keeps me occupied and drains me out of energy. Whatever I'm generating through the vegetative center, I'm draining it out through the reverie. So when I'm suspending the eye, what I'm getting into, and I'm not defining what I'm getting into, I'm getting into something which uh, is a, in, in one of the descriptions, I think we call it the city, the city of light. Let's, let's call it, it's, it's beyond this machine. I'm getting into something which is uh, profound, as we call it in some circumstances. I'm getting into something which maybe I came from there. So, but the only condition is I need to lose the eye temporarily. I need to lose the sensation of it because it doesn't allow me through its uh, constant pressure on me. It doesn't allow me to experience something beyond it. So when I'm suspending it, when I, when I have no longer the feeling or the constant, uh, constant uh, pressure of the eye, when I'm suspending it and when I'm entering into this thing of the profound, whatever is getting registered, okay, now, here's the contradiction. Whatever is getting registered is not happening in, in language, okay? So I'm used to language, right? Like my eye knows language. I'm talking to you because of language. So Silo in one of the talks describes this, that everybody has different translations of the profound. If I get an experience of exiting this eye, the suspending the eye, and I come back from it, as Antonio was talking about, we'll hear uh, the, 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 in Islam, they would say, the prophet spoke to me. Somebody else would say, something else happened. So you, you find that masters from different uh, spectra come with very different descriptions of what they experience because at that moment, there is no I. It is only when I come back and I am, I am kind of, uh, I have ejected the car as it is driving and then I come back into the car from the top now I've got the mechanism back. Once I have the mechanism back, now I'm translating that experience. Now, when I'm translating that experience, I'm going to describe it in, in uh, from where will I describe it? I will describe it back from my memory. What, what vocabulary I know, what, uh, what words I know, what languages I know, what experiences this machine has had in its limited 50 year old life. From that, one will describe this. And that becomes the description of uh, description of the profound through the eye, which was not present at that moment when this experience took place. Are you with me? Ashutosh ji? Yes. That's what I'm saying. Very much, so that, very much, very much there. Very much there. Yeah. So that's 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 why this is this becomes very contradictory. That even though the eye eye gets suspended, eventually it is the eye that translates everything for us. And then if everybody translates it in a different way, that's why we say that there is no single way to describe this. There is a multifarious way to put this across. And as many people are there, that much of descriptions can potentially come up. Are you with me, sir? 
this is of course my opinion it's not the gospel truth i'm just describing it in the way that i experienced it when i had that moment yes that i had. i'm just describing it but but and the multi you know, multifarious that you use i mean mass that have to do with a cultural variations yes. because we must admit that there is an objective structure to the consciousness and then and uh, now and what is the profound eye because uh, we make reference to the profound eye yes yes and yes. so how so do you explain yes, it then so I'll, i will tell you what that's the most amazing thing that there is because there is a real eye okay there is a real eye so there are as as we as we described it in the work there are two eyes one is this one is this thing which i generally know right now in my current state of semi sleep semi sleep i know this thing which i call i but there are so many eyes like i have a, i i have this today my aggregation says at 4:47 pm that i want to have this meeting and at 6 pm this aggregation of the memories and this aggregation of the reveries takes me to eat something which is absolutely unhealthy for me and at 8 pm it comes back and says oh god i've got acidity and at 10 pm it says okay let's take some medicine so there is a contradiction which is which is happening in my in 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 this machine because the i is temporary it's not permanent but i get a sensation through uh, uh, because every time i i i am saying i I, I'm not saying we. I'm saying I. So I, when I say I, it's actually there is no I. There is just at that moment there is a pick from association, a memory. It says, okay, let's go do this. I go do that, and I think that I decided. I didn't decide. It is a random re reverie which got associated with something else. It it came in front of me, and I took a call whether to do it or not. This thing, which is temporary in nature, which I call emotion after that. i say i felt like doing it okay which is not really coming from the emotional center it's coming from the mechanical parts of the centers it's not really coming from the higher higher parts this i is temporary this is this this i we must be very cautious of when we are referring to the second i which we will talk about in a moment because this i is something which will keep us always in an illusion that we are somehow aggregated and everything is fine it's not as we as we rise to a higher state of consciousness and as we uh, let's say, let's say we are in between uh, semi sleep and vigil with reverie and vigil without reverie let's say we are oscillating in that uh, in that bandwidth because these are not clear steps i'd like to just you know make that uh, disclaimer these are not these are not steps it's not like four steps step 1 step 2 step 3 step 4 it's it's more like a range it is more like a frequency that i am sometimes uh, in semi sleep a little bit higher if if i have done work and a little bit in vigil with reverie then sometimes vigil without reverie and then back to vigil with reverie and then out straight into semi sleep and then you know that it, it's it's a range it's until i stabilize with enough energy accumulated in the higher centers it's always going to be a range when i have when i have been able to accumulate enough energy through the work that that one is doing when there is enough energy accumulated into the system that there is enough energy remaining in the higher parts that is in the intellectual parts of or the intellectual sub parts or the intellectual parts of the centers at that moment i have this facility available to me of the i okay that we that we speak about because at that moment my thinking feeling and acting has arrived in one direction only when i am in harmony can i really have an i can i really have a single i until then the i is going to be very transitory in nature this is my contribution to the subject Uh, so, Peter, um, uh, uh, in, in uh, uh, one of the verses, um, uh, Shankaracharya says that I am not uh, like you said. I am not this body. I am not this uh, rule. I am not this. I am not this. I am not. But then, what am I? 
I am that supreme bliss. So Chidananda Rupa. So the profound is called Shiva by him. And he says, I am Chidananda Rupa. That means I mean the profound is like a supreme bliss. But then the next question is that what is the connection of the profound with the force? The force. So you are so saying you are... when the force accumulates to a certain level, then uh, we can. So let me let me just add this. Let me just add this right now. What what he says about Chidananda Rupa is a translation. Okay, having having assumed that he's a master, I have not I have not read him enough to to say this way or that way. But I can tell you this much: having assumed that he's a master. His translation of the profound, as he comes back and says that I'm not the body and I'm not the mind, because remember, this experience of I'm not the body and I'm not the mind is achievable right at vigil. This experience of knowing that this body is definitely not me and this experience of knowing that this, mind, this thing which I call the mind is definitely not me. For that, one does not need to reach objective level of consciousness, even at vigil, this is very clear. At Vigil, it is clear that what is in front of me actually doesn't exist. I mean, if I go further and then people will say, this is a crazy guy talking on the screen. Because uh, there is uh, this experience of Vigil takes you to the force eventually. So uh, I don't know whether he was talking, whether he has reached objective level of consciousness or not, but having assumed that he's a master, He's translating from the profound. What he assumed and what, what he uh, or what, what he experienced, he comes back, comes back to his, let's say, his processor and his hard disk, which is here. Both of, both of them are here. And in his hard disk, there's a certain language existing from, like Antonio very correctly described, his culture or his, uh, his indoctrination or his training or his formation landscape. We have many words for this. We can use anyone and they're more or less in the same range. But since we are in the work of the school, we'll call it formation landscape. In his formation landscape, there's a certain language and description existing. He picks up a certain thing from that goodie bag and he describes it, Chidananda Rupa, and then he says that I am bliss, which is okay. Now you say that what has force got to do with the profound? Right? Force has got to do with everything. There is actually there is uh, if uh, as you rise higher like in my um, I'm I'm right now writing my thesis as I told you guys like almost since two years and struggling with it because not able to complete it but in one of that thing it says that nothing exists but energy because that experience when you get that the material object in front of you or this body which is a material formation is a te is temporary in nature there's just molecular structures which have come together to form this body. At the end of 60 years or 80 years, whatever is our age, we will have to give this body back to the planet and we will go somewhere. Right? There is somewhere we are going to move into. That journey that we are making is the journey of the energy. Right? Mm -hmm. Or as we call in, in the Indian culture, we, we call it the energy body. In, in, in the work of the school, we call it the higher centers remain and the lower centers decimate along with the body. Yes, sir. Uh, Manju and Shankar need translation in Hindi. So <clears throat> if you will uh, allow me with the pause yes, after every one or two sentences, then I can sure, do sir. the translation for that. Sure, sir. So up till now, you, 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 you then our, I'll no. continue and yeah, you hardly, continue. Hardly, hardly 30 seconds are remaining because if the question is, what has force got to do with the profound? And my, jo, my response is, go ahead, sir. The question was, profound ke kya relation hai? Aur usme chaitanya apni baat rakh rahe hai. So the force the, in this universe, in this planet, Actually, nothing exists but energy, right? There is, there is only only what we have is types of energy. As we say, there are there are three types of 
हमारे हमारे ब्रह्मांड में आ, कुछ भी नहीं है आ, शक्ति के अलावा और उस शक्ति के अलग अलग स्वरूप हमें दिखते हैं एंड दिस फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द बॉडी इज नथिंग बट वॉट इज कीपिंग द मॉलिक्यूल्स टूगेदर वॉट इज इट शरीर हम देख रहे हैं वो और कुछ नहीं है परंतु जो परमाणु है अणु है उनको इकट्ठा रखा है किसी शक्ति ने साइंटिस्ट इन यूरोप डिस्क्राइब दिस थिंग ऑफ द गॉड पार्टिकल एंड दे से दैट वी आर नॉट एबल टू सी इट बट इट इज देयर ओके यूरोप में जो वैज्ञानिकों ने गॉड पार्टिकल मतलब भगवान परमाणु अणु अणु दिखाया की बात की है वो कह रहे हैं कि हम इसे देख नहीं सकते हैं लेकिन वो है so what is it that they are not able to see that is keeping the whole contraption together so aisa kya hai jo pure har cheez ko ikattha rakh raha hai par wo dekh nahi pa rahe hain so i would i would humbly submit that nothing exists but energy around us and why we work with the force in the humanist movement or in the guided experiences or as silo has taught us uh, the work with the force why are we working with the force sudhir ji aur mera kehna hai ke इस शक्ति के अलावा और कुछ भी है नहीं इस ब्रह्मांड में और मूवमेंट में जो हम लोग शक्ति के साथ काम करते हैं गाइडेड एक्सपीरियंस के माध्यम से और दूसरे माध्यम से जी द रीजन वी आर वर्किंग विद द फोर्स इज बिकॉज एज वी पास दिस फोर्स रिमेंबर दिस इज जस्ट अ मशीन ओके आई वन शुड नेवर फॉरगेट दैट दिस इज अ मैकेनिकल मशीन हम केवल एक मैकेनिकल मशीन हैं और हम एनर्जी के साथ काम करते हैं ताकि हम एनर्जी को पास कर सकें हम मैकेनिकल मशीन नहीं है हम मैकेनिकल मशीन के अंदर हैं हम उस मैकेनिकल मशीन के अंदर एक हिस्सा हैं तो सो मी एंड दिस मशीन आर टू डिफरेंट बीइंग्स तो हम और मशीन ये दो अलग अलग चीज हैं सो व्हेन आई व्हेन आई से दैट आई एम पासिंग द फोर्स थ्रू द वेरियस सेंटर्स through the experience of the force jab hum kehte hain ki shakti ke anubhav mein hum alag apne alag alag kendron se shakti ko pass kar rahe hain le ja what i am doing nothing but passing the fuel through the machine it's the fuel which is running the machine main kya kar raha hu wo keval ye hai ki main us machine mein se uska tel jo hai wo leke ja raha hu ek se dusri jagah and and the more and the more fuel i am able to create of a finer finer hydrogen because our machine runs on hydrogen hamari ye machine hydrogen pe chalti hai to zyada hydrogen jo main bana sakta hu aur usko pass kar sakta hu so when i when when i eat let's say i create hydrogen 24 in my system and when i'm thinking i have i have spend i have uh, when i have uh, sorry Uh, as we call the transportation of the force is hydrogen 24 i let i'm just making a, a rough number on this because it has to be calculated properly but hydrogen 24 is the food that i'm eating i'm transmuting that and creating this finer energy with which i think so that's let's say hydrogen 3 very fine hydrogen but that is still the force at the end of the day that is the what is running the machine whether in the grosser parts or in the finer parts is still the force is still the energy which is all around us and we are nothing but the energy you continue is very difficult to translate no, no problem <laughs> so no, w- w- all i am saying is that what is what is the force got to the profound main translate karta hu main translate karta hu ye bahut hi sukshma हमारी शक्ति का सूक्ष्म रूप हम ले जाते हैं जब हम हमारी सोच और समझ के बारे में बोलते हैं तो वही ऊर्जा है वही शक्ति है लेकिन उसका एक बहुत ही सूक्ष्म रूप हम तैयार करते हैं वहां पर एंड इट्स व्हाई आई एम नॉट टेकिंग द रिस्क ऑफ टॉकिंग आउट द प्रोफाउंड बिकॉज दैट्स अ वेरी रिस्की डिस्कशन टू हैव सो ऑल आई एम सेइंग इज दैट वी ऑल मस्ट Antonio is smiling as I speak because it is it is very very slippery slope. <laughs> because it's all risky. What did you have been saying? <laughs> you are it's making some separates that even a magician would have difficult difficulty to do. But anyway, 
I think yes. it illustrates things that otherwise are quite difficult to represent. And it's correct in the yes. sense that, in my view, because here each one is talking about a bit of view and their experiences, it's very difficult to say this is this, or this is that. Correct. We correct. are talking of correct. a fairly subjective level. But I think, yes, I mean, everything works with energy. And, uh, and the different, the idea, the feeling and the movement, etc. they work with energy and, uh, and, uh, and the body. And the operation of these organs and this very delicate nervous system and the metabolism of our cells in the brain, etc. is, is, is energy. And uh, whether energy needs to, to, uh, to refine itself within the same body, I frankly don't know if that is the process exactly, no? Yes. But you yes, have little is. refineries in the different centers and produce yes. a little bit of something or other, or is a matter of being able to move energy into some nervous centers that uh, habitually uh, energy doesn't flow. Uh, they, they, uh, to, to try to, uh, to, to follow sorry. the physiological uh, uh, parallel uh, between the psychological phenomena is, is always risky and complicated because, uh, well, it's very so, difficult Antonio, to categorize that you, experience. Eh? Yeah, so then in the passage of force that yes. we uh, do, mm. um, are we saying that uh, when the force expands, and keeps on expanding from our heart to the universe. That is when we have some glimpse of the profound. When the force expands, I don't know, I should I mean, what, what uh, is, is the idea of when force expands? We know that we can project force over other people, for example, but how exactly it moves, how the phenomena runs, because for example, we have a group of ceremonies and every day that after meeting and trying to get in touch with the force, to connect with the force through the experience of the service, etc. Then we try to ask for some of the people who are in greater need. And, and some of our close friends uh, was operated in, in Latin America, in Chile, and a very delicate operation that, uh, well, had certain risks. And uh, we, from different parts of the world, friends are asking and, and having an image, a representation of that person. Even if the representation is not very accurate because we don't have a, a photograph taken the day before, we have, a, we have a feeling for that person and somehow we direct that energy. How it gets directed, I don't know. But the thing is that the operation is very successful. And, uh, and our friend uh, starts to recover and the surgeon is very happy with the results of the operation. And, uh, and out of all the different uh, scenarios that you could have faced, it seems to be the most positive one. So we may uh, attribute to that the possibility of projecting the force. And of this force that I don't know in which magnitude, uh, whether it was very powerful or which level of purity it had, well, it has, seems to produce effects. And think of that sort when we are our askings and, and when we are our different practices, different techniques, we often not only register changes within ourselves because of that intentional act, but also people registers very good things out of it, sometimes not being aware that they are beneficiaries of this practice. How does it work? I cannot tell you because I don't know, but it works. <laughs> we suspect that it works. So we are uh, through quantum physics, I don't know how far we can go. Maybe uh, there are very uh, significant uh, Phenomena like that of the of the cyclotron and uh, and the, the the god particle that appears and disappears, that is there, but it cannot. Every time that you try to control it, it goes somewhere else. Sometimes shoot here, sometimes shoot there. There are fields that are complicated. So where we see the limits of our psychophysical structure and our capacity to 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 identify those things, 
But on the other hand, there is the advancement of science and physics. And, uh, and uh, so we are limited, but on the other hand, we have the ability to understand quite a few things. And in the future, we'll understand more things, thanks to the development of science. So I, I think it's more certain the, the root uh, of our internal work, because sometimes there we can identify some results that make sense to us and some other external indicators of progress. But beyond that, it becomes very allegorical. It becomes very sort of mercurial. You try to, to grab a, 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 a sort of little ball of mercury, it goes in all directions. Doesn't like to be grabbed, <laughs> but, but it's there. So that is a fascinating thing about internal work that you can identify registers of unity, registers of, uh, of um, coherence, of compassion, of uh, greater availability of energy, of glimpses of understanding that they are not that frequent in yourself. And at one point, probably of awakening, but I, uh, for what I uh, have heard, uh, even a higher consciousness, even the higher uh, centers, you will require a memory and you will require a, a, a structure to integrate all these experiences as well. Okay. So no matter what, how advanced a, a, a conscious may be, it will require those basic functions still. So that makes it even more mysterious because you suspend one eye to fall into another eye that is of more profound quality that is not attached to the external phenomena, but let's say that gives reference to that consciousness in a higher realm of operation. We can guess, but we for certainty cannot. But Silo says in, in psychology number four, I think that he, he talks about whatever a, a, whatever a consciousness uh, or a psyche in a higher level of organization will require those things, will require a memory, will require a, a point of connection or identification of the registers it's having and, 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 and a structuring of those phenomena. As you say, the, 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 the guide of that particular religion that you were mentioning, he, as Shitosh was saying, that he describes that sort of nirvana in a particular way, but he is describing it <clears throat> and he is explaining it and he is expressing it with some sort of wording. And he had registers of that, that they are in, in, in his or her experience are very different from the registers in the day-to-day -day operation. So there we are, we ask, there is a, there is a certain uh, integrity in those mechanisms of consciousness in different levels, even the higher levels, which is uh, fascinating. I hope that uh, more uh, we can uh, discuss in the future about this transcendental uh, uh, psychology. Uh, friends, uh, if I may interrupt, we are at the one hour end of the meeting, one hour, 10 minutes. Uh, so let us, uh, let us close this theoretical discussion, which is indeed very important and interesting with the practical exercise that helps us to connect with the force. <clears throat> but it's nice when everybody participates and we exchange yeah. views. Huh? Quite nice. Absolutely. <clears throat> it's definitely nice and required mm. and it's very interesting. Absolutely no doubt about it. But here is an exercise which will take just about two minutes. And that's an exercise that can help us connect with the force. It's probably one of the starting points, the entry points. So accompany me by closing your eyes and preferably keeping a hand on your heart. Take in a deep breath of air from your mouth and imagine that you carry this air 
to your heart. Feel the air going into your heart with your hand on the heart. Breathe deeply from your mouth a few times, taking the air to your heart. Then with all your strength and your faith, ask for yourself and your dearest loved ones. Ask with strength to move away from everything that brings you contradiction. Ask for your life to have unity. Do not spend a great deal of time on this brief prayer, this brief asking. Because if you interrupt for just an instant what is happening in your life, it will be enough. It will be enough for your feelings and your ideas to become clarified by that contact with your interior. When you have finished, you can open your eyes and join us back in this time and space. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you very much, friends. As Thank I so understand, much. this brief experience that may sound nothing to some is probably an entry point to the profound and all that that we were talking. Thank you very much. We will meet next Sunday, same time, same place. Okay. And Have a nice week. Cheers. Bye. And, uh, Bye. Thank you, Sudhir Bhai. Thank you, Antonio. Thank